Thumbnails for Game Space Shapescape. Grids. Uh, one, two, and three point perspective. Do it like this. You can use a different color or not. I do it just to emphasize the difference between ground plane and the plane above. Now you can use a ruler if you want to. Um, but I think that it's, uh, for the purposes of the thumbnail, which is mostly about I generating ideas rather than precision, this is just hunky-dory. A little more complex. Now you just do it three times with the three point. Horizon line here, here, and uh, I'll use that as a vanishing point there. And so with this, it's not as clear where the ground plane is because there really it's a different sort of emphasis. And I'll just change it up here. It helps to create less confusion. Um, yep, so I noticed that between these things you have distortion in these areas beyond it uh, and even beyond the horizon, but that's okay if there's some horizon line distortion. So that took me two and a half minutes to do three grids. So there you go. And what you do, for example, if I want to put a cube in there, my lines are already there telling me the general way that I should be going. Et voila. Okay, so I did these all one point grids, um, and they're all complex, and but based on simple premises. This was based on this negative cylinder canal that I added a bridge to and some buildings, and uh, this was just. I started populating with this rectangular prism and then another and then hollowed it down in. Um, this was just a series of four walls that I cut into, like cookie cutter, asymmetrically. And this was this kind of symmetrical thing, but it's not symmetrical because the vanishing point's there. I'm looking down this way and that's going obliquely this way. So um, creating this, which you want to avoid is overt symmetry. It gets really, really boring. You can have a sense of symmetry, but you want it to be off-center or creating some asymmetry within it. It's good to have both symmetry and asymmetry. It, it, it's a, it's a uh, good thing. Uh, one point, keep the VP on the image. Uh, your border is, is loose. The reason I do it loose is because it's um, subject to change. I had the border here and then I said, oh wait, I want to see the underneath of the canal and the bridge and so I made it bigger because it was appropriate. So, good. Loose with the grids for the thumbnails. You can use ruler, but do it not super intense. I'll show you what I mean. Uh, use a combination of freehand and ruler. It's nice when you can just do 
uh, draw freehand. And then, as you see here, I started to tighten up with ruler because I was really into it. Um, have a simple structural concept before starting. Is it based on a rectangular prism? Is it based on a cylinder? Is it, you know, what, you know, simple motif is the beginning. Um, always allow shapes to travel outside the border. This building going in this way, this way, these coming out this way, this way, this going up through there, off, 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 up, out. This, it helps to bring us into the image, makes it feel like there's a space beyond the image. It's really important. Um, and don't worry about exact perspective and construction. For example, if you're drawing a cone, just, you know, approximate the ellipse and then draw the cone, okay? Um, but this phase is about ideas, okay? Um, and all shapes need to be based on cube, rectangular prism, cone, pyramid, cylinder, sphere. As you see, I've taken some liberties, but they're still within the parameters. I mean, I've got parallelogram, rectangular prisms, and uh, things like that, but it's, it's pretty much there, and you can cut into these shapes and use them as negative. The negatives of these shapes become spaces. So the negative of a cylinder becomes a tunnel. The negative of, uh, of a rectangular prism becomes a room, um, uh, etc. Et so there you go. Here's another one I created quickly. That was like a two minute thing. Uh, this one, now here's an example of using a really fine, once every centimeter, horizontal marking up top and bottom as far as I can go either direction, and then hitting each one. And then you get a very regular grid. It's too dense. You should do it like every one, I'd say inch, like that. Okay, because once you get these oblique angles, um, and it's just a way to get a regular grid. This would be good for your prototype thumbnail, which is the second part of the assignment. Um, here, this is based initially on a rectangular prism that I decided to taper. Uh, it looks like three-point perspective, but actually, no, it's two-point perspective, and um, these are just trapezoidal forms in two-point perspective. Um, make sure both points are beyond the border of the image in two-point. Um, pay attention to all suggestions on the previous page. Good line hierarchy, meaning this is really, you know, it's clean, so I don't. It's not as important, but um, to help avoid confusion, you really pull out shapes that are in foreground and let other ones in back recede, and it helps to clarify the image for you. Um, so these are two-point examples, and um, and then here's a three-point example right here. Uh, this is uh, I started with this cube after I did the grid. And then I changed the border. The border was up here. And then I'm like, wait, I want to see down. And then this is beyond the, the three points right here on this dotted line. And this is where you get distortion. But I'm kind of liking that. I'm like, hey, that's cool. I get that weird distortion. Not too much of this. Uh, this is just an idea that I didn't even use a grid with. I just drew it out. But again, it's just basing on rectangular prisms leaning in. It's like a two-point perspective here and here. It seems like three-point but well, it's actually four point, but that, we'll talk about that later. And this is based on this hexagram that I extrapolated. And because of that, it's sort of kind of like a spaceport feeling anti-gravity because the sacredness of the ground plane has been sort of altered. Uh, so things to focus on here in terms of inspiration is all sorts of architecture, natural structures, um, mazes, puddles, of course, video games, transportation device, devices, machinery, household objects, airports, sci-fi movies, M.C. Escher, the artist, um, canyons, plains, mountains, rivers, microscopic plants and animals, arches, ancient structures, cathedrals, roads, cities, bridges, rooms, um, castles, dungeons, monoliths of etc. Uh, I, I want to try to make it so it doesn't overtly look like any of these things. Like here it seems like a city-ish scape, but there's also, it's deviating from that. Um, there is a pyramid here and the other one, but it doesn't quite look Egyptian. There's other things going on. This is what? A city or a canyon or what is it? Uh, so it, I want you to remain in that vague area. It's about the shapes rather than identifying anything that it's being inspired by. 
So there you go.